in the last segment, we made the structure to hold the mast up to where we can build beams and set them in here to hold down onto this, this lip and then bolts. So now the bolts are in, two of the bolts. These are still loose, but these two are tight. So now we're gonna build the structure that runs along the stringer and sets in here. And then we're gonna run some bolts, probably two bolts through here. And that, it'll never move again. So that's the game plan. What? Go! God dang! You don't even tell me to turn the camera on. So it's Sunday, and we're not trying to work really hard, but we are, I am on a time crunch. I have like 15 days before this boat needs to go back in the water. Well, that's the, that's what I put on myself. So, so I got the first stringer done. And I got two on this side, and two beams on this side. So come up here and see how this sets on the ledger. So right here, see how I notched this out and it sets and then this beam sets on it and that's all epoxied and fiberglass to it. This stringer was where the crack was. The crack ran from here down to there. And this stringer would fill up with water. I've been sucking the water out of this thing for a month and water just keeps coming. So I put this heat gun in there and I'm gonna blow heat down in there for about a half hour. I'm on a little bit of a time crunch because we're trying to get the boat back in the water in like 15 days. It's a Sunday. You can't just go full speed all the time. So we're just gonna take it easy, do a little bit, do a little bit, see how far we get. And the Chiefs game's gonna be on soon. Oh, I'm back to a place that I left a long time ago. Just give me a sec, I'll smoke this cigarette. Breaking body feels better stored. What do you do when you just pick up my guitar? on your plate when I need to escape everything will be better when I find find a way people leave do they have so this spacer is providing three functions one is to stop the water from coming up to where I'm getting ready to lay the new fiberglass. Two is that it strengthens, strengthens up right where the old and the new fiberglass is going to meet because that's where the seam's going to be. And three would be it just strengthens up the whole area right there because that spot right there is where the strap, when they pick the boat up, is where it's going to lift on. So that seam right there has to be super strong. And this boat weighs like 70, almost 70,000 pounds. So there's a lot of pressure on this one spot. You want to put this goop up there because it makes it sticky. So when you put, putting this fiberglass up upside down and on its side, the, if you thicken it a little bit and then put the layer up, it sticks. You won't have issues with it not sticking. And you can fill in all these little voids. 
and just make it better. So this right here is the first layer of fiberglass. So it's 1708, and we're just gonna line the top and down. See, because fiberglass really doesn't have strength. Like this top here, bowing down when it's flat, it really, no, not much strength. It's all on the side and maybe in that corner. So we're just gonna put a piece from the top down and then the same from up here, from the top down. And then we're gonna epoxy a beam to it. And this is pretty, this is, I'm just kind of waterproofing it and strengthening up the old, the old stringer. I'm just doing it for, I mean, you could probably got away with not doing this part, but man, it's, this boat's never gonna be opened again, probably in here, unless there's some kind of, catastrophic damage so why not just do a good job all right so the same thing put the smear some sticky shit on there stickiness on there you don't want it too thick you just want it to a nice thin layer you don't want to be putting a whole bunch of it on there you ready i'm ready let's see where that ends up now do you guys see how i only put the fiberglass onto the top and down one side that's because if you put it down the other side the air gets trapped in there it's hard to get the air out so you see me using that tool and I'm only working it now at the top I can get the air to come out the one side and then work the other side and get the air out all right so that's that it's just one layer so that's that now we're going to epoxy the board to it all right, now we've put up a layer of 1708 fiberglass here, a layer of 170 fiberglass here, and they, and then this beam has been glued and this beam has been epoxied. So the next step is to take another piece of fiberglass and loop it all the way around from bottom, from here over to here, same here. And we'll do two layers, then we'll go ahead and put two more beams in epoxy them and then we're done except for putting the bolts in now remember when you're working with this epoxy you need to put a little thin bit of thickened epoxy up in there to where you get a good bond because it doesn't bond well without it unless you're just laying it flat and really you could probably get away with I could probably got away with not putting this last coat of fiberglass on there but see now here is where I can get it over it doesn't always has a hard time getting it to fold and not stretch it you don't want to stretch the fiberglass if you possible all right all right now so on this sheet Right here, I put a little bit of thickened epoxy, real thin over it, and make it, once again, it's to make it sticky. Let's do this again. Now looping it, the fiberglass, all the way around to both sides makes it a little bit more difficult to work with, and it's harder to get the air out. But, you know, a little bit of patience, you, you get the work done. So all we got now, we're gonna fiberglass this, put the beams in, and uh, we're getting there. All right, so both beam structures are in. Two on this side, two on this side. Now all I got left to do is to drill some holes there, 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 and there. Put some bolts and two, and a couple bolts back there. And it's done, the structure's done. 
So the next step is to put the bolts in. And let's see how this works out because there's not a lot of space. So to do this job, you've got to have a certain type of drill. You've got to have one that has a, a short throat on it and then maybe even smaller drill bits that you get it to where you can get up into here because right here and right here are the beams that we filled all that fiberglass up into and made them stronger. So finally, all the bolts are in and I got all the grinding done. It's going to take like, I bet, four days of grinding. So there's that bolt, that bolt, and there's one back there, and there's one there, there, and there, back where you can't see it. But you see how I just took the bolt and ran it, so it's a six inch bolt, and it was hard to find the bolts. I finally found a place where I could get a six inch, half inch bolt. So it's almost as bad as doing plumbing where you have to go back and forth to the store to get parts when you're trying to do it because it's you always like oh I need this oh I need that everything always changes and it's the nasty it's still a, it's a nasty day outside but this week coming up is supposed to be pretty decent so I should I'll get all the fiberglass work done and that'll be the end of that I'll have it done by today Sunday by the end of Friday that fiberglass work will be done and that'll be the end of that and I can put all the mechanics back together and get back in the water. And we're going to take off to Florida. So don't forget, if you ever buy a big old 55 foot sailboat, man, it comes with money and, and patience. And you have to be a problem solver. You've got to be able to solve these problems. And sometimes it gets overwhelming and you just got to keep struggling through it. And... And you know, I, it, I, I know it sounds like, oh, it's kind of, don't be so weak or whatever. No, it's hard. I'm telling you, it's hard. I flipped houses for a long time. And all I did is ever do with houses is problem solve. And I got better to where I could just go to Home Depot or Lowe's, buy what I need for a month, come back, and I'd have all my stuff. You know, every once in a while I'd have to go find something. I'd have to go get something, but not... You know, I had it all in my head. This, different. It's a whole different animal. And um, the time and labor involved in this is a lot more than a house. The best comment that I ever had was, make sure you do it right if you're going to do it when it comes to that boat. There's no... Because you're, it's, it's kind of like a house. If you do a whole bunch of half-ass shoddy work, you end up with just shoddy. It's, it's not right. On this boat, usually you can buy like hose clamps. You can buy the cheap hose clamps. You can buy expensive hose clamps. I'm telling you, by the end of the job, after you get this boat totally done, if you buy all the right stuff, it'll show. Same thing with the house. If you buy all the right stuff, and you're trying to sell it for a house that costs fifty thousand dollars, and now you're going to sell it for a quarter million dollars. You put the right stuff in it; it goes a long way because people will recognize the quality. So that's the end of the video. Next time on the Bohemian, we get the grinding done. I get all the fiberglass leveled out, and I get the skin put on.